So welcome to Bangkapi, a wonderful up and coming suburb on the east side of the city that's got a little bit of everything. I think you're going to like this place. So the neighbourhood of Bangkapi sits on both sides of the Klong San Seb Canal where four major roads come together and that's Lard Prao Road, Ram Kam Heng Road, Si Nakarin Road and Seri Thai Road. The area is undergoing a bit of regeneration at the moment and give it two or three years this could be a well connected desirable place to move to. Well, I was hoping to do a bit more filming around here today, but the rain has put a stop to all that. That's why I'm on the skywalk. Luckily, I did lots of B-roll yesterday around here when the weather was better. Anyway, I'm in the center, the hub of Bangkapi, just down the road from the MRT station. Lots to see, lots to do, lots to buy, lots to eat, of course. You've got the mall department store. Opposite that, there's a couple of smaller shopping centers markets, street food markets as well. It's rush hour at the moment, so that means a lot of noise, a lot of traffic, crowds of people. One thing you definitely can't avoid around here is the smell hanging in the air of all the street food. So the district of Bangkapi, very big area. It would take me weeks to do a video on the whole district, but it used to be a hell of a lot bigger until 1971 when it was split up. On Sukhumvit Road, you've got a branch of Bangkok Bank. It's called the Bangkapi branch opposite Soy 13. So that goes to show just how big it used to be. Well, this is a noisy Bangkapi intersection. Please do excuse the background noise. This is where Lard Prao Road ends and Seritai Road begins. Now, Seritai may be familiar to you if you know anything about Thailand's history during World War II. And I will be explaining all that a little bit later when I get to somewhere quieter. Meanwhile, here at the intersection, they're doing a bit of work on the flyover. They're building a plaza and a skywalk all the way to the mall. Now, if you thought the mall was the first shopping mall around here, think again, because where I'm standing used to be the Imperial World Department Store. I'm not quite sure what year it closed. Also, in the corner of the intersection, there is a picture of the completed flyover and plaza. And over the top of it is what I can only assume is the MRT Brown Line train. And that project is currently in the bidding stage. So the first wave of modernisation in this area was the early 1970s and the National Housing Authority which was set up in 1973 to provide cheap housing for people on low incomes. Their first major project was the Klong Chan housing project. There are over 5,800 units here for rent. I checked online and you can get a place here for as little as 3,500 baht a month. Running down one side of the Klong Chan housing estate is the Lambang Boy Canal. 
and it's another one I can tick off my list. It gets ever more exciting around here. And that way it flows into the Klong San Seb Canal. This way it goes up towards Nawamin Road. Now, this may be a little bit geeky for you, all these canals, but don't knock it. Me collecting canals is the same as any of you guys collecting porn clips. I got my bag of nuts right here. Or would you call that a nut sack? I don't know. Actually, these nuts, as Snoop Dogg would say, are actually called monkey nuts where I come from. I'm not sure if that's the worldwide term used for these nuts. Anyway, we've got more important things to talk about, like the terminus here of the Klong San Seb Canal Boat Service. This is Wat Seaborn Roaring Pier. And also from here, you can get an electric boat free all the way to Minbury. And I know they don't get many customers on those boats during the day. Last time I took one of those boats, I was actually the only one on the boat for the whole route. So uh, if you want to see the outer reaches of the Klong San Seb Canal, get yourself up to here and grab one of these electric boats. Well, just behind me, you can see the monks' living quarters over at Wat Seaborn Roang, all those orange robes blowing in the wind. Just below that is the Klong Wat Seaborn Roang, another canal I can tick off my list of Bangkok Klongs visited. And at the moment, there's no water in it because they're doing a bit of flood protection work along the sides and they've pinned off the canal to stop the water from the Klong San Seb flooding in. That's a pretty impressive dam that they've built. Anyway, if you follow this canal here, you'll get to the airplane graveyard. Well, this is what's left of the airplane graveyard. Not a lot, as you can see. I think it's been about nine months since they cleared this land. I was here one year ago when I did the Lost in Bangkok video. And I remember getting to the gate and they had a notice on it that said, no unauthorized persons. And the thing is, this is actually a public road. It's Ram Kam Heng Soy 105. So they weren't really allowed to do that. The old lady wouldn't let me in and try to wave me away. And then a minute later, a young girl came out and said, you can come in for 200 baht, but you've only got one hour. So I spent 59 minutes climbing around the wreckage of this 747 here, risking serious injury, I might add, the things I do for YouTube. And then on this side, they had a pile of spare parts, seats, luggage lockers, oxygen masks, trolleys, all that kind of thing. And I do wonder if they sold those spare parts to an existing airline. You never know. Wouldn't surprise me. A lot of memories for a lot of YouTubers who came and shot videos here. Anyway, I fancy a walk in the park. Well, if you're looking for green space, there are a couple of parks around here that I'm going to show you in a little while. If you like walking, then there's the path alongside the Klong San Seb Canal here. And it's perfect if you want to go jogging, cycling, count those steps. This is definitely my first choice for stretching my legs. And from here, you can go as far as you want. It's 57 kilometers to the very end of the canal at the Bang Pekong River in Cha Chong Sao, or it's about 12 kilometers back towards Sukhumvit Road. I suggest you keep it sensible. It's about eight kilometers to the Quan Riem floating market. And you can combine that with an early Sunday morning stroll, work up a bit of an appetite, and then grab yourself a spot of lunch at the market.
there is a park about three kilometers up the canal. I know I could actually walk it, but today I'm a little bit tired, so I thought I'd jump on one of the electric boats. Well, I've just got off here at Klongrahat Pier and it's still about a kilometre to this park. Part of the walk takes us alongside the Klongrahat Canal. This being another canal, I can tick off my list of Bangkok Klongs that I've visited, still hundreds more to go. Well, this park really is an oasis away from the madness. It's a lovely day. This is Seri Thai Gardens, a park wrapped around a huge lake, which is the Bung Kum Reservoir. And this is a flood relief dam, which hasn't had a lot of work to do thus far. We've had a pretty dry, rainy season, but we've still got August and September to come, so you never know. So let's get into a bit of history now. Seri Thai, what is it, or rather, what was it? The Seri Thai movement was a Thai underground resistance movement against the Japanese during World War II. They were an important source of military intelligence for the Allies in this region. So here's a bit of background on the Seri Thai movement. 8th of December 1941, the Japanese invaded Thailand. Thailand initially resisted, but then news came through of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and the Thai government led by Plek Pibun Songkram ordered a ceasefire. They had talks with the Japanese and allowed them into the country to use it as a base for their Malaya and Burma campaigns. Those were British colonies. After the Japanese invaded Malaya, Plek Pibun Songkram signed an alliance with Japan and declared war on the US and the UK but the Thai ambassador in Washington, Seni Pramat, refused to deliver the official declaration of war to the US government. As a result, the US did not formally declare war on Thailand. The Thai ambassador in Washington, who was staunchly anti-Japanese, set up the Seri Thai movement with the help from the US government. They recruited Thai students across the US to work with the United States Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, which later became the CIA. They trained these Thai students and set up units ready to infiltrate Thailand. By the end of the war, there were over 50,000 Thais trained, armed and ready to fight the Japanese and join the Seri Thai members who had already parachuted into the country. By that time, the Japanese had already left Thailand. So I did a search to find out how this area got its name. And when I say search, I mean one of those old fashioned Google searches where you type it in with your fingers. Not one of those AI searches. ChatGPT doesn't know a lot about Bangkok history, trust me. Anyway, it came up with three possibilities as to how Bang Kapi got its name. But let's start with Bang. That was the name given to a village or a hamlet or a settlement next to water. Many years ago, there were probably three times as many canals in this city as there are now. And that's why you have so many place names starting with Bang, like Bang Ken, Bang Su, 
Bankapi, of course. Now, the three possibilities for kapi. First one, it's an ingredient they use to make shrimp paste. Many years ago, this canal was well known for its abundance of freshwater shrimp. Probably not so much nowadays, so that's one possibility. Second one, kapi was the name given to the monkeys that used to inhabit the dense jungles around here. Kapi, possibly short for capuchin. But the third possibility, probably the most likely, is kapi being short for kapi yar, which is the male Muslim skull cap. And when this canal was built, they used the labour force of Malaysian prisoners of war. When it was finished, they allowed them to settle in places alongside this canal. That's why you have many Muslim communities in places like Ram Kam Heng, Bang Kapi, Klong Chan. And every evening you can hear the Muslim call to prayer from the many mosques around here alongside the canal. In the past, this area had a lot of buffaloes and it's still not unusual to see buffaloes roaming in the suburbs of the city. Now there's an old photo from 1981 which shows a buffalo standing on the edge of Lard Prow Road in the location where they later built the moor. And I was doubtful at first that that was the actual location, but then I saw a comment that said, in the corner of the picture, you can see the shop houses of Soy Happy Land. And I looked closely and I thought, yes, it is. This area started becoming built up in the early 1970s and a company called Happy Land bought lots of land on the opposite side of Lard Prow Road and developed it. In 1973 they built Thailand's first ever theme park called Happy Land and I know this is a bit optimistic of me but I wanted to walk up and see if there was any trace left over of this old theme park that closed 44 years ago. Well, this is the closest I'm going to get to the former entrance to Happy Land theme park. It has been over 40 years and this housing development here, Sindhorn it's called, has been here since the early 1980s and of course back then this area was a lot different and Happy Land would have been outside the city. People would come from miles around to enjoy the rides. It was Thailand's first ever outdoor theme park. Now there were lots of safety issues. It was only open for six years and after a tragic accident where 10 kids were killed, it was closed in 1979. A lot of the rides were sold to Siam Park, which opened about eight kilometers away in 1980. And that is what we now know as Siam Amazing Park. Lard Prow Road, it's a bit of a mess here at the moment. Things are being dug up, moved, paved over or built on. And like many areas undergoing regeneration, there's a lot of construction and land being sold around here. This is partly due to the MRT Orange and Yellow Line projects, which raised the land prices around here and made it the ideal spot to build more condos. But these lines will connect the area to the rail network. I'm sitting under the stairs here outside the mall and a couple of security guys have popped their heads around to see just what it is I'm filming. I think they think I'm doing upskirt shots of all the women going up the stairs. I didn't know that was a thing here. I know they go crazy for that in Korea, but that's definitely not what I'm doing. Anyway, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, pollution and dust, major issue around here. 
and that's due to the ongoing construction mostly, skywalks, bridges, flyovers, and the mall department store is undergoing a major renovation. Opened in 1994, it's where everyone, of course, goes shopping, hangs out, eats, drinks, practices their dance moves, sees movies, and you can cut through still to get to the Klong San Seb canal boat pier. Well, if you're looking to rent a place around here, you are incredibly spoilt for choice. There are prices to suit all budgets from as little as 2,000 baht a month, all the way up to whatever it is you're willing to pay. I've divided the condos into three different areas, Canal Side, Ram Kam Heng Road, and Lard Prow Road. And as usual, I've included a guide price for a monthly rental. So now that this area is connected to civilization thanks to the MRT yellow line, how long would it take to get from here to say Sukhumvit Road? In the past it would be at least an hour and a half in a traffic jam. There's always the canal boats but I still know quite a few foreigners whose high-end style is seriously cramped on those boats. But I've been doing a few calculations anyway and I think it's about 40 minutes from here to the center of the city. Do excuse the noise around here. This is where Lard Prow Road meets C. Nakarin Road and the yellow line actually takes a right turn. We're going to go over the canal bridge to Yek Lam Sali or Lam Sali intersection. If this was a canal down here, not a road, and there was a tsunami going down this canal, would I be standing on a bridge over troubled water? It's a terrible joke, I know. If you're an avid follower of this channel, you might remember a similarly lame joke that I cracked in this spot two years ago. There are men at work down under. And of course, those men at work that were down under haven't quite finished their tasks, although yet Glam Sally Station is of course up and running on the yellow line. There is an orange line station here too. That's about two or three years away from being open. Anyway, this is where Ram Kam Heng Road meets the beginning of C Nakarin Road, and we're going to have a walk up both directions of Ram Kam Heng Road. We're going to head this way down Ram Kam Heng Road. This is going inbound and along here there's quite a few condos to rent. There's a lot of land in the process of being sold. More developments, more condos coming of course. Apart from that, it's not that adventurous. I've been here loads of times before so this probably won't take very long.
So we're going to head outbound along Ram Kamhang Road now. Not sure how far I'm going to go, probably about one and a half kilometers. See how adventurous it gets. And there's a couple of decent looking condos to rent up here as well. One of them is the Bangkok Horizon building, which is the tallest condo around here, for now anyway. According to this notice, this is a spot where they're going to build the future terminal station for the MRT Brown Line monorail, probably about 10 years away. And just looking up and down this street, it's going to be a bit of a squeeze, isn't it? But they'll probably demolish the row of shops on the left here. So this is Soy 105 and it goes into the old airplane graveyard, as we mentioned earlier on, it is no more. Well, this is almost as far as I said I was gonna go, one and a half kilometers. That's the headquarters of Amway, by the way. And as you well know, I had a negative experience with an Amway salesman a few years ago, probably not the only one, but I've had positive experiences with Amway products. So I hope that balances things out. And just here on the bridge is the Klong Ban Ma, another canal I can tick off my list of Bangkok canals visited. And that brings us up to Ban Ma intersection. Just further up, you've got a big C and Klong Ban Ma MRT Orange Line station, which uh, obviously isn't open just yet. And I think that wraps up our look at Ram Kam Haring Road outbound. Well, that just about wraps up our look around Bangkapi. I hope you found it exciting, interesting, educational even. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. Like, share, leave a comment. If you want to support me and support the channel, you can do so via the Buy Me A Coffee link on the screen, or you can join the channel and become a member. That just leads me to say what I always say. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.